Hello and welcome to indirect proof. Now indirect proof is a very strong uh, method to prove the validity of an argument and it is uh, very helpful uh, in solving most of the questions. In fact, uh, if you are stuck with any question and you know uh, the method of indirect proof, so it will provide a possible solution to any argument whatsoever it is given in say propositional logic. <coughs> So it is a very strong uh, technique and uh, there is another technique which we will be uh, uh, learning uh, say in a couple of lectures time and that will be the strength and conditional proof. So that is also something which we will be taking and it is going to be also a very strong method. Now what does IP say? IP uh, or indirect proof is sometimes called as uh, IP, right? It is the short form. Now IP says a very simple thing and uh, it is very easy to apply and it also makes uh, many a times the questions easier and definitely the unsolvable questions solvable as well. Now suppose you are given uh, say premise 1, 2, say up to n and there is a conclusion, right? So this is an argument which is given to us. So what we do is that we take the negation of the conclusion, right? And also make it as a premise. Fine. So we remove the conclusion is here that was C. We take the negation of the conclusion here and then start solving it with the help of 19 rules. Right? We use the 19 rules that is the rule of inference, right? And the rules of replacement. So we use both of them and start solving it. Now we will reach an inherent contradiction. That means like suppose P1 and negation of P1 will come or say P2 and negation of P2 will come or anything will come. Say suppose Z and negation of Z may come because it was constituting in say any of the premises. So when it reaches, we say that this has been proved by uh, indirect proof and it is a very strong technique of solving uh, the question. Now, many a times people leave the question here, but uh, I will uh, request you because not every examiner will uh, say that once you have reached the contradiction, because look, you have reached the contradiction. P1 and negation of P1 are contradictory premises or P2 and negation of P2 are contradictory premises or Z and uh, negation of Z are contradictory premises. But this has not given the conclusion C, right? because that can be said. Sometimes the C directly comes in the question. So in that case, maybe it is not required for you to um, solve it further. Or else, what is requirement is, like suppose if I have reached the conclusion uh, or say after solving uh, with negation C and using 19 rules and all these operations, the rules of inference and rules of replacement, I got P1 and negation of P1, suppose. Because I already have P1 and I reached negation of P1. So I said that, oh, now the question is solved. But how this question is solved? Because you need to conclude C from this uh, question. So how this question is solved? Now this question is solved precisely because, like suppose if you have P1 and you add conclusion to it as addition, because addition is a rule of inference which we can use. And with the help of negation of P1, which you have already received, and disjunctive syllogism, you will get C. Right? So, you will reach the conclusion. Now, this is something which we can uh, understand with the help of an example from your book first. Okay. So, now let us take a question from your book to understand this, that how this is applied or how we uh, solve these kind of questions. Right? Uh, let us take a question of your book, which is an unsolved question. Right? So, that will be a good exercise for us. Mm, like suppose if we take this question the first premise says D wedge E implies F implies G okay this is the first premise the second premise says negation of G wedge H implies D dot f this is the second premise and therefore g this is the conclusion of the question now once this question is given to us we are asked to prove it with the help of ip 
Now, uh, let us be very uh, clinical in our approach. So, how to do the question, what should be the way to write the proof and what should be the steps and how to follow the steps and all these things are certain things which you should write properly. So, on step number three, what we will do, we will take the negation of the conclusion. We will say negation of G. Now, how we take negation of G? The justification is that we are applying IP. So, you just write IP over here and the justification is taken care of because G is the conclusion. So, if you take negation G as the assumption, so it means that you are using IP. Now, once you have taken negation of G, how to go for it? How to solve this question? Because you have to still get the answer, right? Okay. So, you can see that in this step, if I want to enter this step, so I can add on step number four, negation of G veg H. So, third addition, I have added successfully H. Now, once I have got this, so with line number two, you will find that we will come out with D dot F, right? So, D dot F is uh, obtained. So, this will be 2, 4 modus points, right? So, this is also reached, okay? Now, we need to go to this step. So, what we will do is that we will simplify D. So, fifth simplification, right? So, with the simplification, we have reached D. Now, I will take it here. So, step number seven, what we will do? We will add e to d so it will be on sixth addition i will take a line like this okay now i can go to with first time this i will get f implies g so this will be one seven modus ponens right now what i have got f implies g and this negation of g if i apply over here so i will get negation of f this will be 8 3 modus torrens so i have got negation of f and from here i can get f right so on line number 10 i can uh, i can get negation uh, okay i can get f from here so i will make it as f i will say on fifth commutation and simplification okay so i have got f now this is a uh, i will say <clears throat> uh, like uh, a contradiction right now this from here you can do two things one you can do is that if you put as if you use more exponents here on line number eight and line number ten so you will get G from here and this is what your answer is required, right? So this is one way of doing your question. You can always do it in this way. But I will prefer to do it in a more clinical fashion. More clinical fashion in the means because you have attained a contradiction. Many people will leave the question here. Okay. In some of the books, including Kopi, you will find that once the contradiction has been reached, so you say that now the uh, premises have become inconsistent and therefore you will say that this argument is an invalid argument or uh, is a valid argument because the premises are inconsistent right so that is one approach the other approach as you can see in this question that i have got f implies g i have got f so from here and here i can get g directly so that is also one approach but still the soul of ip uh, is not uh, very clearly undertaken unless you prove a contradiction first you have to prove a contradiction because many a times you will find that without even solving uh, or without even making the contradiction explicit you get the solution right uh, and you say that okay the solution has been reached and in, there is no way that uh, a teacher or an examiner will say that no this is not the way it is also one of the ways but as I told you, the soul, the heart of uh, solving a question with IP uh, requires you to prove inconsistent premises first. Then using that inconsistent premise set to find the solution, right? Now, 
you can see that I will not leave the question here. You can leave the question here by saying that line number 9 and line number 10 are inconsistent. Therefore, this argument is valid. Okay. Or you can use uh, on line number 11. F implies G. F. Therefore, G. The question is proved. This is another way. But do this. You add the answer here. Because right now you can do it with a couple of ways. Right. But many a times you will not find these kind of things. So what you should do? You should add the answer on the positive part of the contradiction. Right. So F wedge G. Okay. Because we need the answer G. So this is 10 addition. And then on line number 12, because of this negation of F, you can write it as G, 11, uh, 9, disjunctive syllogism. Now, this is the way, this is a proper way, this is the clinical way, the most uh, authentic way of solving the question using IP. Because in IP, there can be a lot of questions, a lot of types of questions where you will find the solution in two or three steps directly, not even uh, creating a uh, inconsistent pair because the inconsistency would have also come. But because you have taken the negation of the premises, the question has become utterly simple. So that uh, negation of the conclusion, therefore the question has become utterly simple. So this is something which happens. Sometimes what happens is, sometimes what happens is that you can create the answer in a different way, right? So that is also possible. Sometimes people will leave the question here on line number 9 and line number 10 because the inconsistent pair has been reached. So th this is a basic formality, right? But this formality needs to be done. This is like a clinical approach of solving the question. This is also a way to suppose you are proving something like, like many a times you are writing a quote, right? And this quote uh, is... Uh, say written in some software language right so what we do you also write some kind of preambles some kind of things which you comment so that if your codes are used by somebody else so he or she also understands that how this code is followed or what are the things which you are defining here what are the environments which you have defined there right so those things those things needs to be taken care of because if you are doing it precisely for your own sake, you can be intelligent enough to see this question and say that, oh, this is a valid argument. I know because this value, this value, that value, and it will be proved. But if you need to show it that how it is proved, so I will say that this is the technique through which it should be shown. So you have a lot of questions in your book and you can take any question in this book, like in CP, you know, the, uh, when we studied CP, so there is one uh, condition and that is that the conclusion should have a material implication as the main connective. But in case of IP, any question, any question, even if uh, it is a question with a material implication as the main connective, you can solve that. You can take any conclusion whatsoever, whether it is a conjunction, disjunction or a material equivalence or a negation, whatever it is. You can take it uh, for IP and try to solve it. The question may or may not get simpler, but the question will be proved. That is something which is guaranteed, right? So if you have uh, learned 19 rules and you are using with 19 rules IP, any question whatsoever can be solved. If you are using 19 rules only or you are using just CP, uh, because CP is also used with 19 rules, so many a questions may not be solvable and in case of CP, many a questions will uh, uh, not be applicable. You cannot apply uh, CP on all the questions, right? So that is also something which you should understand. So now if you learned or if you have understood IP and now if you take any question in your book, you can go on to solve that. However, there is one method still which we will be solving or which we will be using that is SCP. It is also a very, very strong method. And uh, once you will master IP and SCP, I don't think so that any question in propositional logic is something which you cannot solve, right? So practice and uh, make yourself more perfect.